16. Verse 16 it says, Then said I, Wisdom is better than strength. Wisdom is better than strength. There are some people, they, they, they think they have power, they have authority, they have anointing, they have baptism, the Holy Ghost. No wisdom. And then in verse 18, wisdom is better than weapons of war. Wisdom, and that's one of the things we're going to find out as you see those apostles ministering. That's why they didn't go to everybody and they didn't try to raise every dead. They had perception in the spirit. They had obedience to the spirit. They had wisdom from the spirit. He endowment by the spirit. Endowment by the spirit. There's no point you trying to do what you know you are not endued for, endowed for. But they had endowment, endowment by the spirit. Our revelation from the spirit. Revelation. They knew this was what to do to this man. And because they had the revelation, that is why they were not beating about the bush. They were not just trying to do something. The Spirit revealed unto them have faith by the Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit gave unto some wisdom by the Spirit. Knowledge by the Spirit. Word of knowledge, a word of wisdom, and faith by the Spirit. And the working of miracles by the Spirit. You understanding in the spirit in the spiritual realm he had understanding and because of that understanding they did what they did El, listening to the spirit listening to the spirit come back now to luke chapter 7 i read about how that son of the widow woman was raised from the dead i'm reading now from this same luke chapter 7 verse 19 Luke chapter 7, looking at verse 19. And John calling unto him two of his disciples sent them to Jesus, saying, Art thou he that shall come? Or look we for another? When the men were come unto him, they said, John the Baptist sent us sent us unto thee, saying, Art thou he that shall come? Or look we for another, and in that hour he cured many of their infirmities and plagues, and of evil spirits, and unto many that were blind he gave sight. Then Jesus answering said unto them, Go your way, tell John what, that, what ye have seen and heard, how that the blind see, and the lame walk. And the lepers are cleansed. And the dead hear. Tell me the next thing. And the dead are raised. To the poor the gospel is preached. It is preached. And blessed is he. Whosoever shall not be offended in me. John said to the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you the one coming? Or do we look for another? And Jesus said go and tell him. Great miracles are taking place. And among those great miracles, the dead are raised. I want you to look at Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14. I'm reading from verses 1 and 2. At that time, Herod the Tetrarch heard of the fame of Jesus and said unto his servants, this is John the Baptist. He is risen from the dead. Therefore, mighty works do show forth themselves in him. Between the one I read to you and this account in Matthew now, Herod killed John. And Herod said, It is this John that I Healed, that was dead, that is walking these miracles because he's risen from the dead. That's what he thought. But the point I want to make here is that in this, in Matthew chapter 14, verse 12, his disciples came and took up his body, that's the body of John, and buried it. And they went, what did they do? They told Jesus. And what would Jesus do now? Because they said John is dead. 
and we his disciples will come to tell you John is dead and we've gone to bury him verse 13 when Jesus heard of it he departed thence by sheep into a desert place apart and when the people had thereof they followed him on foot out of the cities and Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them and he healed their sick why did he go and raise John from the dead think about that you see many people they just think that everybody that dies just go there and raise them up Jesus said go and tell John that the sick are healed the lepers are cleansed. Demons are cast out. Tell John the dead are raised. And then when John died, Jesus just, when they told Jesus, he just left that place, went to another way. Why? Because of perception in the spirit. Because of obedience to the spirit. And because of wisdom in the spirit. Because of endearment by the spirit, revelation from the spirit. It was revealed to him that John. John's time to go was like that. Look at Acts of the Apostles chapter 13. Acts chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 25. Acts chapter 13, verse, verse, uh, verse 25. And as John fulfilled his course, he said, Whom think ye that I am? I am not he. But behold, there cometh one after me, whose shoes of his feet are not worthy to lose. Notice that word fulfilled. John fulfilled his cause. And Jesus knew that. And so when he told Jesus that John had died, he said, that's all right. He, when he told him, he went another way. He didn't try to go and raise up John because he had fulfilled his cause. Many people don't understand that. And because of that lack of understanding, they go about trying to do this and trying to do that. And when it doesn't work, they say, well, we don't know. The promises of God are not working anymore. The promises of God are working. But God has a purpose. I need to have perception in the spirit. I'm looking at um, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 6. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 6, it says, After that, he was seen of above 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are falling asleep. We are told that when Jesus Christ rose from the dead, more than 500 people saw him. And when Paul the apostle was writing, he said, Some of those people that saw Jesus Christ, they are dead. And then why didn't Peter go there to raise them up? No, it's not. Raising the dead is not raising everybody. It's only at the time of resurrection, the resurrection of the dead, that all the dead will be raised. But at this time now, many that are falling asleep, he just left them like that. First Corinthians chapter 11. In First Corinthians chapter 11, I'm reading verse 30. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Paul the Apostle, they're talking about the Corinthian, in the Corinthian church, many have fallen asleep, many have died. Why don't you go and raise them up? Not everybody. You might need to have perception in the spirit and obedience to the spirit. In First Thessalonians, I'm reading chapter 4. First Thessalonians chapter 4, and we're reading there from verse 13. But I will not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. That she sorrow not as others, even as others which have no hope. That tells us many in the church in Thessalonica, they were falling asleep, they were dead. And Paul the Apostle did not say that everyone that died in that church in Thessalonica, bring them here. We're going to raise them up. Perception. You must have perception. You must hear what the Spirit is saying. Obedience to the voice of the Spirit. You must have wisdom. Otherwise, you will make a fool of yourself and a fool of the church. And the world will be laughing at the church of Tesnaika. You must have endowment by the Spirit. And there is no apostle that is endowed with power to raise all the dead in the world. Only Jesus Christ has that power. And that power, it will effect, it will operate at the end of time. It says the time is coming. It's not now. 
when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of Man in their graves, and they that hear shall rise up. But today is one isolated case there, one isolated case there, as well perception of the Spirit, and we're listening to the Spirit. By the way, when the believers die, they go to rest. We're looking at um, Revelation chapter 14, verse 13. Revelation chapter 13, verse 14. And I had a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, says the Spirit, that they may do what? Rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Except you have real prompting of the Spirit, perception of the Spirit understanding of the spirit you have no business uh, you know going to gauge the believers that have gone to their rest that have gone to their reward that have gone to glory that have gone to the promise to see the promise of the lord you don't have any any kind of business bringing them back to a world of trial and tribulation and trouble and sorrow and suffering and heartache and persecution and pressure. Now, after the dead are raised, what follows? I'm looking at point number two now. We're looking at uh, practical responsibility after raising the dead. Practical responsibility after raising the dead. We're coming back to Acts of the Apostles chapter 9. Acts chapter 9, verses 40 and 41 again. Acts chapter 9, verse 40. And, but Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed and turning him to the body said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up. And he gave her his hand and lifted her up. And when she, when he had called the saints and widows, tell me the next scene, he presented her alive. I want you to think of that word, present. He presented her alive. Widows, you wanted her back, I present her unto you. Present, to present her unto the saints and the widows. What does that imply? I'm presenting her to you that whatever she needs now is in your hand. I've raised her up from the dead. She's gone to heaven. And if we leave her, she'll remain forever in heaven. I'm presenting her now unto you. Take care that when she eventually dies, she gets back to heaven. It's not just the joy of having the dead raised. After the dead had been raised, how do they spend the rest of their lives? Says, give her fellowship. Says, give her the watch of life. Says, give her support. Says, some widows, instead of just depending upon her, that she will begin to make another coat for you and another dress for you, help her so that as she's gone to heaven and you bring her back, make sure that as I present her to you, eventually she still gets to heaven. You ever think about if you bring somebody back from the dead, a believer who has gone to heaven, a believer who has gone to rest, and you say, no, she must not go. He must not go. He must come back. If he comes back, we'll present him unto you. That eventually you'll be able to take care of him and take care of her. And be able to make her help, help her, help him to overcome all temptation, all trial. After you bring her back so that you can present her back to the Lord eventually holy and saved and sanctified and pure. I'm looking at Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1 verse 28. Who will preach? One in every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Peter said, I present her to you. I'm not living in Joppa. I'm not a resident pastor here. I'm not a resident apostle here. I present this docus back to you on the final day when we get to heaven. You have the responsibility of presenting her perfect in Christ Jesus. How many people pray for the sick and after the sick are healed, they just leave them like that? 
And the sick, they are jobless, they leave them like that. The sick, they are not sick there, they leave them like that. The sick, they do not know the way to heaven, they leave them like that. I present the healed man unto you. Now you have the responsibility to present her unto Christ eventually so that she will get to heaven, he will get to heaven eventually. And if you, if you cannot give that guarantee, if you cannot hold on to that responsibility, then she's gone to heaven, leave her where she is. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might, what's the next word? Present it to himself a glorious church. Not having sport or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Now, widows, your wanted, Docker's back, she's back, and I present her unto you. I hope you are not going to be telling her this is your enemy that killed you. That's your enemy that didn't want you to live. After you died, we got the information. And this, I hope you're not going to pollute her mind, pollute her heart, pollute her spirit, and be telling her things that will give her root to bitterness in her heart so that she'll remain without sin, without spot, without wrinkle, without any of the marks of the old nature, carnal nature, but be a part of the glorious church. That's what we're learning. That after you bring somebody back from the dead, now is she still going to die eventually? And you're still going to die eventually. And without holiness, he will not see the Lord. Without holiness, she will not see the Lord. After you bring her back from the dead, make sure that you keep her in that holiness and righteousness without blemish, without blame, so that she'll see the Lord eventually. We're looking at Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 41. Mark chapter 5, verse 41. In verse 41 it says, And he took the damsel by my hand, and said unto her, That little coma, which, be, which is being interpreted, damsel, I say unto thee, Arise. And straightway the damsel arose, and walked, for she was of the age of twelve years, and they were astonished with a great astonishment. That's not the age. Look at verse 43 now. And he charged them straightly that no man should know it. And he commanded them that what? Tell me out loud. Something should be given to her to eat. She's raised from the dead. Parents, now that your child is raised from the dead, your responsibility continues. You know, as a little child, suffer little children to come unto me. For their angels do behold the face of my Father in heaven. If you have left this child to just go like that and leave her, she'll probably be in heaven. Beholding the face of the angels, the guardian angels, and see the glory of God and rejoice with the people in heaven. Now, you brought the child back age of 12 and now that this child is back you have responsibility nurse her train her feed her give her something to eat today and of course tomorrow and of course for the rest of her lives and make her a useful citizen in the country in the world many people do not understand that she know they are commanded to do that after you raise her from the dead after she comes back from the grave then you're going to have the responsibility of doing what needs to be done. Feed her. Acts of the Apostles chapter 20. And I'm reading from verse 28. Acts of the Apostles chapter 20 verse 28. Take it therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God. You know what people do if uh, they have any case of somebody coming back from the dead? What they do is, they don't have any food in their hand for her. They don't have any clothes in their hand for her. 
They don't have any house accommodation for her to live in. They don't have any kind of job for her to do. They don't have any care, concern, comfort, compassion. They're going to render. They don't have any hospitality they're going to do to her. You know what they do? They go to her. What did you see? Tell us. When you, when you were over there, you were away for three hours. Do you know? You died for one whole day. Do you know? Before Peter came and before Jesus came, did you see Moses? And then they go to, and journalists will go to her. And people will be going to her. They won't even allow her to rest or to sleep. And all they want, they want revelation and vision. What did you hear? What kind of song did they sing there? How would they say, Did you see my wife that died over there? Is she in heaven? Did you see my mother? Did you see my father? But do you know that all these people that were raised, when they came back, they never told any story. Never. Go back to the Old Testament. When Elijah raised that boy up, no story. And go back to the Old Testament, Elisha raised him up when he died, and then he dropped that man. He came back, no story. And then Dorcas, when Dorcas came back, no story. And when all